I am a political scientist and I, um, for many years, worked with a sociologist and a political theorist running a project for the Russell Sage Foundation on trust and trustworthiness. So for us, trust is really about the relationships among individuals, largely individuals who know each other. They can be part of a social network where they can be verified by someone each knows or are part of a collective in some way or another. So that also introduces context. It also introduces competence. So I may think that my husband is fantastic trustworthy in doing a whole variety of tasks, but I wouldn't ask him to fix the car, right? Um, I wouldn't have confidence that he could do that. I might trust him in the sense that I know he would have my interest at heart. So that's the other piece of this, that when we talk about trust, we're really talking about assessing whether someone is trustworthy, it, meaning that they have my interest in heart. But that doesn't mean they're competent to act on my interest. So we're concerned about both whether the other has your interest at heart, but also whether they can actually affect the outcome that they're promising to keep. So what we're looking for are indicators of reliability, credibility, competence, trustworthiness writ large. So the question is really, do I have confidence that institution has rules in place? that make sure that those who are doing things that will affect me, in some sense, have my interest in heart. Right. So when we think about the internet, there are just a million reasons why confidence is violated all the time. But that we've seen huge numbers of cases where we have learned that our what we thought was our private data has been mined for some other purpose. Um, sometimes we even gave our permission to do that, but in ways that weren't transparent, and so we didn't totally understand what we were giving our permission to do. So that's one way in which there's been a violation of credibility and confidence that's done by the corporations themselves. But then you add to that the layer of hacking. You're not the enforcer. You can't promise us that we are protected, no matter how powerful a military, to use the British analogy, you are. So this is the world we live in with the internet right now. First of all, we're still under-institutionalized in terms of the relationships between us and the corporate world that we're interacting with. And then we're subject to this incredible amount of hacking and piracy, which no one seems to be able to control. That's a very anarchic world. And I think the other thing to take away from that is one of the things that we know from the long study of trust and trustworthiness and confidence and reliability is that it's very easy to break it down. That a few violations, even a single violation sometimes, is enough to unravel the whole system. So there's a really interesting question here, which really has to do with the fact that having said what I just said, we still continue to do all the practices that we know could get us into deep, deep, deep trouble. Um, I know this and I use the internet all the time. I give my um, visa card up, I give my, you know, I put passwords in, I still lead my life as if somehow these organizations and corporations are reliable and that that the systems work, even though I know they don't. So why is that? Well, I think there's another issue here, which we have not adequately dealt with, and I don't even know how to begin to deal with it, which is our incredible dependency, one, on these kinds of processes. We also, I think, have some residual confidence, which we shouldn't belittle because we have to survive in this world, um, that by revealing these bad practices, I mean, one of the things about the internet, as I said, is it's something that's evolving. It grew up faster than the rules to govern it kept up with that. So I've used Google and Amazon as examples, and I think they're also good examples of the positive as well as the negative problems. They're they're very big companies, and so they can get away with a lot. But on the other hand, they've also taken it, taken responsibility when 
accused of problems or when problems are revealed, some of which they might not have totally controlled, some of which they totally controlled, um, but they have taken some responsibility in improving their systems. So it raises the other question about, and maybe the corporations are trying to act in our interest there when they defend our privacy, um, or when they introduce new systems for protecting our visa cards. But we still come back to the question of, are they really adequately, one, are they adequately motivated? What are their real incentives here? And do we know enough about that to feel confidence that they're actually acting in something that we might credibly believe is our interest, at least the social welfare of the society, even if individuals may disagree about that? And two, do they have the competence to do that? Do they actually know how to do that? Letters, numbers, symbols, the data to be placed in the computer can also be encoded on punched cards. 